You are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. going down what the fuck is going down it's your boy studio macgyver and you are listening to studio macgyver's dragon ball and video game podcast welcome to the show if you love anime if you love video games if you love nerd culture then you've come to the right place we talk about all of that shit here today's show guys i want to welcome all and everyone and i hope everybody is doing well out there in those uh, Corona virus streets. I hope everybody's staying inside, staying safe and staying away from potential drama and just sitting inside, enjoying games, anime, movies, and whatever else you find yourself into these days. Man, got a good show today, guys. Going to talk about a lot of different things. Uh, What I've done this past week, I've played a lot of games. I've watched a lot of anime And I am going to get into all of that. Plus, we got some news down the pipeline out here in these video game streets. A lot of moves are being made, some because of the coronavirus, some not uh, just a natural progression of things out here. But yeah, man, we're going to get into it. Uh, One of the things I want to talk about is uh, some Resident Evil stuff, Resident Evil news. All the Resident Evil fans, uh, there's a couple of things I want to brush up on real quick. Something uh, to talk about in case you guys did not know about it. Also, I want to talk a little bit about (laughs) uh, the WWE 2K series. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We got some Nintendo stuff going on, like the games I've been playing. Me and my son, we've been here. He's seven years old and we've been playing a lot of that lately. Going to get into that. Got some games on sale as well uh, that I picked up or actually one in particular I want to talk about. And uh, what I've been watching, man, anime, movies, shows, what what have I been doing? Uh, Netflix has had a lot of my time. Who's got a little bit of it as well? Going to talk about some things, man. There is some dope anime out here. And I'm sure uh, if you guys are listening to this podcast, you might want to know about one in particular. One that I talk about a lot, actually, especially these last few episodes. I've been talking about it and I was drunk with anticipation talking about this said anime. But I'm definitely going to get into that. Also, PlayStation 5, the controller, it's out. We know what it looks like. We're still waiting on the fucking system. But at least we know what the controller looks like. I'm going to talk about that. And, man, Stadia. Stadia. Yes, there is Stadia news out here in these digital streets. What is it about? Uh, I'm sure a lot of us will be laughing our happy asses off when I bring it to the table. Um... And some Final Fantasy VII stuff, guys. The game is out, man. Uh, there's a lot sh- of shit going on out here. There's a lot of discussions being, uh, you know, dissected and talked about concerning this game. And I'm definitely going to get into that as well. So with that being said, let's begin the motherfucking show. And I want to start with Resident Evil news. I want to start with some of that because we've had a resurgence, guys of Resident Evil. We've had a lot of fucking remakes come our way and they came our way pretty fucking quick. And and look, that's not a bad thing at all. Capcom is doing their thing uh, when it comes to the Resident Evil series, uh, which, you know, they should take some of that power. They should take some of that energy and in my opinion and move it towards the Street Fighter side of things, because uh, let's keep it real. That is still in dismay. If you ask me, if I'm being completely honest with you guys as a big Street Fighter fan, um, Yeah, but anyway, we're talking about Resident Evil here, and what I want to talk about is what these guys are doing. Now, if you guys don't know, Resident Evil 8 will be in the works. It it actually is in development. I mean, a lot of these games are in development now. Uh, You know, I think it's all safe. I think it's pretty safe to say um, they're going to get postponed somewhat, even though we don't have release dates on a lot of these games. um, The window that these release dates might be have been uh that we might have been thinking about in our minds we probably need to just wipe that clean because the coronavirus situation has done a lot of damage 
um, to a lot of things in the gaming world is just one of many. But anyway, Resident Evil 8, if you guys haven't heard, uh, there's a Resident Evil 8 game in development. It's Resident Evil 8 Village. I think that's the Code Village or whatever. I think that's what they're going with right now. They, they may change it. They may not. But it takes place in Europe. Uh, that's about all I know for the most part. But we're not even talking about Resident Evil 8 in particular. I really want to talk about uh, with all these remakes out here being done. We had two. Now we had three. Um, now everybody's wondering, what was that next game? What will be the next Resident Evil game? Uh, if you're talking about all these remakes, what game do you think will be next in line? And the game that I'm uh, I thought, you know, would have been that game would have been Cold Veronica. Yes, a uh, really underrated game out here in these uh these digital streets when you're talking about resident evil as a franchise i think that's a really dope game always love that game but that game is not the one the next game i guess uh, would be after resident evil 3 hmm well yes you guessed it resident evil 4 is going to be the next one in development and hey i'm not upset about that please don't get it twisted resident evil 4 was my favorite resident evil game of all time uh I just love that game. I remember still to this day, memories of that game playing on those extra discs on the fucking Nintendo GameCube. I remember it like it was yesterday and man, it was a scary, but at the same time, it was a great time. I mean, that was one of my accomplishments that I was proud to say I completed because that game had me scared as fuck. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was shook out here in these digital streets, but I got it done. They weren't able to pull out that warm butter on me and I finished it. I finished the game. But hearing news like this, a Resident Evil 4 remake, yo, how beautiful would that be with the controls that it has now, which still hold up today till today? I mean, their, their controls um, are some of the best controls in a Resident Evil game, in my opinion. Uh, if they were to do a remake, basically just give it a facelift and put it out there in those digital streets, man. I think I'd lose myself. Uh, definitely a collector's edition on that. Oh, if they have one. Uh, yeah, I would definitely put my money on the table with that one. And I think I'm not the only one who feels that way. But that game is in development, guys. Now, there's no other news I have for you guys other than that. But just to know that it is in development is cool with me. We'll probably get it on the PlayStation 5. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. We could still get it for the PS4, Resident Evil 4, PlayStation 4. <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe they're doing it since it's already in development. They've probably been developing it. You know, I'm working on it for the PlayStation 4. And then, like, you know, I've said before, when the game does come out, um, all of us PS5 owners will just put it in a PS5 and play it like that. You know, faster load times or whatever, whatever. I think that's the uh, the recipe they're going to be going with moving forward with some of the games that are still in development for the PlayStation 4, uh, you know, moving forward. And that's OK with me. That's why I was going to get the PS5. You know, day one instead of waiting like I usually wait when new consoles drop. So if I'm able to play my backlog and my other games on there, then it's cool. And that's another reason why I'm going after all physical, because one question I always had and I still have it um, and I haven't really been able to find out what I would love to know. Maybe you guys do. Maybe you guys don't. But what I would love to know is what about digital games? How would that work moving forward with the PlayStation 5? So if you got all of these fucking digital games you know, on these hard drives or whatever. Um, how will they incorporate that as far as playing those on the PlayStation five? Will it be as simple as just taking your hard drive with those games on it, plugging it into the PlayStation five and just going to work? Or would there be some other workarounds or would it even be possible uh, to do? Uh, would they only require you to have the disc? Uh, so those are the questions that I'm having right now. I'm assuming that you'd be able to use, you know, the hard to download the games because you know, basically the disc is the same thing in, in, you know, in a nutshell, because I'm sure you're probably going to have to download. Maybe say you bought a PlayStation four game and you wanted to play it for the, on the five, you put it in there. There may be like a download or something that you'd have to download to the five to finish or complete the game or play the game there. You know, I'm assuming that there is going to be something like that. I don't know. These are the questions that I have. They're up in the air, but I would love to get those answers and I'm sure we'll get all that shit ironed out uh, in due time. But that's one of the questions I had. Um, if you guys didn't know, now, you know, Resident Evil 4 in development. So get ready for it. And this is going to be the I think, in my opinion, is going to be one of the best ones and one of the bigger games, too, because, like I said, and they put a lot in that game. That game was like a double disc. So I remember playing it through the disc and I was like, damn, I played the shit out of this first disc. And then 
Oh, insert disc too. So I was, <laughs> I was crazy. I was scared, but happy at the same fucking time. Uh, yeah, it was just a great experience. And uh, I, I can only imagine how dope it's going to be when they remake it. Moving forward to the next subject at hand, guys. Let's talk about this WWE 2K21. Yes. Uh, rumor has it that this game is going to be canceled. Now, there's a number of different reasons why this is going to happen. Uh, one of them uh, is the fact that the coronavirus has, you know, it's out here and it's postponing a lot of different things development wise or whatnot. But I think the bigger picture and the bigger reason why they're canceling this one, if you ask me, is the fucking disaster. Uh, the shit show that they put on for 2K20. It was just a trashed game. It, it was very bad. Uh, you know, ever since Ukes left, which was after 2K19, which was the game that I own and the only one that I do play because, you know, that was a decent version of the game. Um, they just went to shit and they don't know what they're fucking doing. Uh, they just dropped the ball completely. And, you know, when you put out games like this every year, this type of shit tends to happen. Um, and with the coronavirus shit going on, you know, that's motion capture. So a lot of wrestlers are, are not there anymore. They've moved on. And a lot of wrestlers have, you know, returned or, you know, their new faces. And you need motion capture for these moves. You need a lot of this stuff to take place. And a lot of this shit is not going on right now uh, because of what's going on right now in the world with this, this virus shit going on. So, you know, it, it's understandable, but just keep it real with each other. If I'm being honest with you guys, I'm not, I don't want to see another WWE 2K game, uh, to be honest with you, as long as I live, if I'm being completely honest, I would love to see another company get a hold of that license and do something with it. Fuck it. I would just love to see another wrestling game that isn't even ha based on a WWE. It could be anybody. It could be, you know, anything as long as it's not them. Uh, because apparently they don't have enough people who know about wrestling games, or who love it enough to, you know, do what they need to do to get this shit cracking. I mean, every year they're taking away features. Uh, they're changing things up. They're cutting corners. They think people are stupid out here and they don't, they can't read between the lines. And that's what's, you know, got them in the state that they're in now. Okay. If they truly believe that they had a product that was worthy to play, I think they'd fight tooth and nail to get this shit out. And, that's not going to happen. That's just more reasons why this game shouldn't come out and why it's not coming out. In my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I'm ready for something new. I've been ready for something new and hopefully, uh, we get that. It finally comes to fruition. Now, supposedly they're working on another title. It is a wrestling game, but that's all I know. I don't know, you know, what's the difference. What will be the difference between that and a 2k game? Maybe, you know, it's less simulated, uh, it's not a simulator like like 2K is and it's something a little bit different. I don't know. But as long as it's not 2K, hey, I I'm I'll give it the benefit of the doubt because I've never seen it before. And it's a first time thing. But as far as I'm concerned, guys, good riddance to 2K right now <laughs> and, 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 and God be with them moving forward. Uh, hopefully on the next gen, maybe they can do some different things and, and just make it a better game. Period. I, I really want to see another company uh, take that license or I just want to see another wrestling game, period. Uh, another simulated game uh, just with, you know, different eyes, different minds working on it. Um, I would love to see the AK, AI or the Aki engine. I think that's how you pronounce it. But the same companies who did the throwback games, the Nintendo 64 games, the WCW, NWO Revenge, you know, the WrestleMania 2000s and and the No Mercies. Like, I would love to see those guys bring back those engines and just kind of um, take those engines and basically move it to modern times. Basically, just build around that engine. Let that be the skeleton and let's work on that. Because in my opinion, that's still one of the best wrestling engines out there, man. And I still love those games. I still play those games. Those games are fucking classics. OK, and let's not forget about virtual pro wrestling, too, because I'm not. I love virtual pro wrestling. It's basically the same engine, but it's just a Japanese version of that game. All right. Anyway, moving on to the next subject, guys. Let's talk about some Nintendo shit. I've been playing a lot of uh, Nintendo Switch lately, man. Me and my son, we've been playing it and uh, having a fucking blast doing that. And some of the games we've been playing have been, man, this is one game we just bought. Uh, we played the demo of it and I don't even know the fucking name, uh, 
but it was like two bucks. Okay. The demo, we played it. We really love the game. You're like these animal ninjas and you're running around, you know what I'm saying? With different swords and, and all this crazy shit. It's pretty cool. I mean, when I think of Nintendo switch, I, I honestly think of, you know, indie titles, like the king of the indies only because it's not because they, you, you can only play them there, but it's because you can play them and take them anywhere. You can take them into the room. You can take them in the road. You can take them, you know, in the closet, on the floor, whatever. You know what I mean? You're not confined, you know, to the game room or wherever you're at. And that's the cool thing. That's why I try to buy those games and those games only on a Nintendo Switch. And that's one of the games we've been playing as of late. But another one I just bought, there was a sale going on. And uh, I remember a game called Golf Story. You guys might have remembered me talking about this game. It's been months, months since I brought it up. But it's a golf RPG game, man. A lot of people who played it have been singing its praises. And I decided, you know, to look into it. I was just looking at what games were on sale, what games came to mind. And this one was on sale. It's only 15 bucks, uh, brand new, like, you know, to download, but it was like 50% off. So I got it for like, what, seven fifty. So I made that happen, man. And, and, and quite honestly, I'm glad that I did. Uh, whenever I see deals like this, man, I just kind of, I run with it. And there's even better deals. There's $2 games, $1 games. I bought like a, uh, what was this game? A jewel game. I love the little jewel games, the match three games. Uh, 99 cent. And after the, the Nintendo points that I had, it was like 55 cent. So 50 cent for a game. <laughs> Come on, man. Kill some time. You know, got some decent music in the background. Run that shit. Play that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. So that's what I've been doing with the Nintendo Switch. Uh, And that's what I've been doing, you know, with my son. So having a good time, having a blast, doing our thing. He's probably literally waiting on me right now to finish this fucking podcast so that we can... uh do something on this game. He's waiting. So, all right, guys, next thing I want to talk about, let's talk about this fucking PlayStation five controller. Let's talk about this shit, man. Uh, the controller's out. It's out here. I've seen it. And uh, what a lot of people will, well, I'll just say me personally, what I think about the controller, I don't have a problem with this controller, man. I really like this controller. Now, <sighs> The question, couple questions that I do have with this controller is the color. The one thing that I, you know, the one that they kept showing was just like it was it's a white and black, but it's like it's like 80 percent white and then like 20 percent black. And I don't like that. Um, now, hopefully they have different colors and no one Sony. They'll definitely have the all black. I've seen pictures. But I don't know if that was photoshopped or not. Or if that was an actual black controller, I'm not quite sure. I hope that, that 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 those photos were real. And I can definitely give it that. The color was really my only gripe with the controller, but it looks really streamlined. It looks kind of like an Xbox controller in a sense. And there's nothing wrong with the Xbox controller. In my opinion, I believe that they have the better controller as far as how how they feel. Uh, that's just my opinion. But, uh, you know, time only time will tell when we. I get my hands on this uh, controller and find out what it's really about. Now, supposedly it's, it's really, really a lot going on inside of that thing. And I hope that all of that, you know, stuff going on inside there isn't going to subtract from the, the dreaded battery life of, you know, the, the current controller right now. My issue with the PlayStation four controller is that the fucking battery because of that goddamn light in the front, now, there's supposedly a light in the front of this one as well. I don't know what options we have as far as dimming that or maybe turning it off completely. Hopefully we have an option to turn that shit off completely if we're not using it. I really do, man, believe uh, and hope that that happens because how I play my shit now, luckily I have n a number of controllers. But if I didn't and I, and I was a guy with just one controller, you know, I'd be upset, man, because I'd constantly be trying to figure out a way to keep that thing charged. But how I'm doing it now is when my controller battery gets low, I simply, you know, keep it and use a charger. I use a charger plug for it. I have an extended uh, length, you know, charger for my phone and I have an Android phone. So the charger port is the exact same as you know the ps4 so i just keep it plugged in when i'm playing if i know i'm gonna be playing for hours i'm going to do uh, some kind of long haul of a gameplay session then i keep that plugged in so i don't have to worry about it ever dying i mean it's cool if you can if you can afford that or if you have that luxury or if you you know you happen to have a controller uh cord like that but what if you don't what if you play you know 
a certain distance away from your TV. You know, people play different ways. So you have to kind of think about that when you're making these controllers. And, you know, when I first bought the PS4, man, the one thing that I always kept have worrying about was, damn, when is this shit going to die? When is this shit going to die? Because that fucking light was basically just on and it's killing the fucking battery. If it wasn't for that light, man, I honestly believe that I'd be able to get at least another three, four hours of battery life easily out of that controller. So let's hope that problem is solved and we don't have to worry about that uh, because these controllers are, are really top of the line, you know, as far as all of these things that it can do. And then it brings you to ask yourself this. How much are these going to be? If you need to get a spare controller, are we talking seventy dollars, eighty dollars? I mean, because the current PS4 controllers now are around seventy bucks, uh, you know, depending on where you go, you know, sixty nine ninety nine. I mean, sh- that's kind of steep. So. You know, I like to have two controllers at all time because just in case something happens, you don't you don't want to be stuck out. So, you know, I don't know. That's just me. When I bought my PS4, I bought two controllers just so I could have, you know, that extra that extra controller. So we'll see, man. I mean, who knows? Maybe we can even use the PS4 controllers for the PlayStation 5. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know, because I got a shitload of those and uh, I'm really, really hoping that is the case. But we'll see. Only time will tell. Thought you guys might want to hear my thoughts on the PlayStation 5 controller. If you haven't seen it, I mean, check out my, you know, check out my Instagram. I have a picture of one on there or you can just Google the shit and and see for yourself and make your own decision. Yeah. All right. Moving on, guys. Let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about. um, uh, Can't believe I'm saying this, this word, this name. I'm talking about fucking Google Stadia, man. Okay, Google Stadia is back in the scene. They're back in the news. Okay, Uh, and this time I think everybody has their uh, other sites set on, you know, what these guys are trying to do. Okay, they're they're not going to be able to pull out the warm butter this time, guys, putting a stop to it. Everybody has put a stop to it. But what they're trying to do now is they're trying to give away Stadia for free right now. All right. Uh, And nobody seems to give a fuck. Honestly, nobody seems to care. Uh, but apparently, apparently 14 countries, OK, are able to get this Google Stadia Pro for two months for free. OK, now what makes Google Stadia trash, in my opinion, is, you know, a lot of things. But one of the main things is games. You want to talk about games? What games are available for me if I chose to pay this $10 a month plus, you know, everything I needed to get this shit up and running? and it's it's a laughing it's a joke it's really a joke uh the games are old they're older titles that you can get way cheaper on other consoles and it just doesn't make sense um keep in mind that uh, these games you're streaming these games so the bandwidth and and i seem that most people who talk about google stadia seems to forget that and that's one of the most important things in my opinion like how much are you internet are you using up by playing this you're not going to have any Internet left if you play this the way you really want to play a game. You know, the average video game player who, you know, plays, they play in, you know, you're at least playing a couple hours a day. That's just the average gamer. OK, um, that's not going to last you very long. It's not going to last a month before you hit your fucking data cap on your Internet with your provider. If you fucking streaming these games and a lot of people fail to you know, bring that up. They used to bring it up at first when it first came out. People were talking about that. But now, you know, they talk about some of the other, you know, things that it fell short on. But still, this is one of the most important ones, man. With no with with not much data. I mean, you're fucked on everything else. OK, because we don't just game. I mean, there's other things that I do personally, and I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you guys do. Uh, we stream, you know, game. We stream movies, TV shows and stuff like that. You know, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I just thought it was funny that they're they're giving it away free and it was only a matter of time before this was going to happen. And I'm, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do next. I, I really want to know what the next step is going to be with these guys, man. It just makes me laugh inside. It really does. <laughs> it does. Um, moving on to the next subject. Let's talk about Final Fantasy seven. OK, the elephant in the room that uh, that fucking game. Uh, has been praised pretty much all over the place. Um, I mean, it's a great game. Let's just keep it real. I'm not, 
I don't have the game. OK, I played the demo, love the demo. I'm just going to say this. I just want to talk about what everybody's talking about, what everybody, even all the big, you know, Final Fantasy seven fanboys have in the back of their mind. OK, now on reviews, hey, they cleaned up, they cleaned house. OK, Metacritic gave it an 87 percent. GameStop gave it a 10 out of fucking 10. All right. Tech Radar gave it a five out of five. Now, even, you know, the audience rating, the average audience rating summary, which is uh, 4.6. Now, that's taken from about right now, as of this podcast, 1,081 votes, voters. OK, out of 1,081 voters uh, from, you know, a scale from one to five uh, points included. So you can go point two, point three, whatever the fuck they gave it a 4.6. So pretty much most mostly everybody loved this game. OK, now. You, when I talk about RPGs, one of the things that comes to play in my mind or the questions that I have is not even a question like what I expect out of an, a, a true, fully fleshed out RPG for the most part um, is it, it needs to be, in my opinion, a good RPG needs to be about 40, 50 hours. OK. Now, there are some dope and um, some dope, you know, RPGs that that are shorter. OK. But that's just what I think. That's just what, what goes on in my mind. And as good as this fucking game is, you know what I mean? And I'm going to I'm going to play the game, but I'm not going to I'm not going to buy a full price. But what's going to end up happening is I'm going to either rent it um, or I am going to buy it when it is in the bargain bin time you know twenty dollars thirty bucks uh, anything more than thirty i will not i will not pay for it and the reason why is because of this uh and this is what this is causing a lot of friction out here in these uh digital streets as far as you know as in the on the internet uh people are torn b- between this even fans of the series like super fans of the series now you're going to have the fanboys who are going to defend it to the to the end of time and whatever and it's all good defend it i'm i'm Look, if you buy the game, it's cool. If you don't buy the game, it's cool as well. I'm not going to eat your lunch for either either one you pick uh, because it is a dope game. So if you did you constitute spending your money on that and you love the series, by all means, do that, uh, you know, and that's fine. But on the other hand, if you're hesitant about spending that because you're going to run through the game in about 20 to 30 hours, then, you know, you could also justify not paying it and just waiting because here's what here was here's what the problem is when you talk to a lot of these fans from at least from what I've seen, you know, on the Internet, on Twitter, all these places, Reddit, whatever. Everybody is touchy about, you know, these guys not basically letting people know that, especially people who are new to the series, who don't know anything about it. And they're just coming in that this is, you know, not a whole game. OK. Like the box, it doesn't when you look at that box, the box looks like a. Oh, man, this is Final Fantasy seven. This is the, the game. Now, those people remember from back in the day when they were kids playing it, then they go in the store and they say, oh, shit, we're going to get Final Fantasy seven. Now, if they don't look and like really Google that shit and dig deep, they, they might not find out that, oh, this is just one part. Now, if you're looking at by what's been going on and how long it takes the game to beat and, and what part of of this story takes place. You're looking at another five between four to six more uh, releases before you get the full game complete. And that is the problem that a lot of people are having right now. That is the fucking issue at hand because they don't, they want to play the whole thing. They want the whole experience. And a lot of people feel like, you know, square Enix, uh, they're, they're bird feeding the community. OK, uh, now, but, you know, this is the crazy thing about all of this. Supposedly, they don't even have the next part even done yet. Like they're still working on, you know, the next chapter of the story. You know what I mean? So then that brings another question. Well, if they're just working on the next part of the story, how long is it going to be before we get the complete set? Will it all come out on the PlayStation 4? Will you release some of it on the 5? I hope they don't do that. I mean, I would think that they would release this one on the PlayStation 4, all of the titles. But the question is, when, you know, when will we get these? Uh, how long does it take? We all know that it takes huge, huge teams to make these games. And it takes a lot, 
a lot of time as well. So if this game, the second part is not even finished and complete, how else would, you know, you guys do this? By the time you get the the all the complete story, I mean, we're looking at what, 2026? Are we looking at 2025, 2026 before all of these games are out? And that's the thing. The fans, the, the super fans are going to buy it because they love it. But at the same time, in the back of their mind, they're, they're going to get salty because it's being bird fed. It's being handed out to them in chapters. You know what I mean? And, and they're they feel like they're being they're being exploited. And you can argue both ways because you can also argue, well, shit, if this game does get released and, you know, they're putting it out, you know, in these increments, what if they put them all out? What if this game came out and, you know, and they put it all together? Um, you know how, how big that game would be? That game would be fucking huge because I think this game here alone was at man, how many gigs was this shit? I want to say it was like 80 something. It, it's a it's a big game. I just I'll say that it's it's like it's a huge game uh, for for the length that it is. And it would take up your whole fucking hard drive, your basic ass hard drive. If you were to, you know, do that, that that's the thing, you know, that, like I said, man, I'm just I'm just a spectator. I'm looking at it from from a distance and I'm observing what's happening. And that's the type of thing that I see. Uh, you know, when I look at this and that's the type of feelings that, you know, I I'm conveying by what I'm seeing. It's almost like whatever you choose, it's not, it's not a wrong answer. You know, there's not a wrong answer. You're not wrong for buying the game, but you're also not wrong for, you know, not buying the game because, because of that, everybody has their own reasons, but we could talk about this shit for hours. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I would love to pick some of you guys' brains on this said subject, uh, especially the big, the big, big, big Final Fantasy VII fans out there. If you're listening and if you're a huge Final Fantasy VII fan, let me know what you feel. Let me know how you feel about this situation, man. Inbox me on Instagram at Studio MacGyver79 or hit me on Twitter at Studio MacGyver and let me know how you feel, man. I, I would love to know. I really would. Now I'm going to put that, uh, I'm going to put this, uh, <laughs> this discussion to bed. Uh, but yeah, like I said, my door is always open. I would love to know how you guys feel. I have a couple listeners who have already bought the game. I talked about one of them, uh, last week, I think, and he got it early and, you know, he enjoyed it. He, he loved it. Uh, and like I said, I am not doubting that the game is awesome at all. You know, what we are given, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, I, I guarantee you one thing. After he after he beat that game, I guarantee you his ass was thirsty. He still wanted more. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes that's that's a, that's a, that's not a good feeling. Um, we all get it. We all just have to deal with it. You watch an anime and it's over and you're like, damn, I want more. Or you play something and you want more. I mean, you know, some people play it over again. Some people, you know, do deal with it that way. We all have our own ways of dealing with those things. But, you know, it's something that needs to be discussed. And I'm just uh, curious to how everybody else out there feels about this subject. All right. Now that's over. Let's fucking move on. Let's get towards the end of the podcast. And um, what I want to talk about, guys, is, you know, first some and let's get into some anime real quick. Some anime. Yes. Uh, what have I been watching as of late? <clears throat> now, I, I finally wrapped up My Hero Academia. Yes. Season four. The finale was here. It was done. And, uh, yo, I, you know, I didn't see this coming. Let me just say that I did not see this shit coming. Endeavor, you know, he he showed me something and I'll leave it at that. He showed me something and uh, man, he, he got fucked up really, really bad, though. Um, so I, <laughs> uh, it just it just goes to show you that, um, you know, people can change. Individuals can change. Uh, when I first saw Endeavor, I remember how much of a dickhead he was. And he did a lot of fucked up things, man, to his own family. You know what I mean? To his own wife, to his own kids, all of those things. And to see him kind of change slowly over time into somebody you can actually somewhat respect, uh, you know, it, it did something. And he went out, you know, he went out like a G. Uh, I don't know any other way to say it. Uh, on that season finale. And, you know, I thought the kids were going to get, get jump in. And, and what's crazy is, you know, I like the fact that they didn't, that they stayed on the sideline and watched everything and kind of just observed, you know, on looking at the TV screen 
and, and letting him do his work, you know, uh, all I'm gonna say is if you haven't watched the season finale, cause I do have some friends who haven't gotten to it yet, just, you know, just watch it. It's still kind of fresh and I don't want to get all the way into it like that because some of you guys might have not seen it yet or gotten there yet. So I'll give you another week, another week. And before I get deep and all the way deep into this discussion, because I, I definitely will probably have uh, my boy dig uh, on one of these shows soon to talk about, you know, that that season and, and especially the season finale and how what he thought about, you know, everything that took place and what's to come, because it's going to get it's going to get real. I think season five is going to be going to be really crazy. I, I really fucking do. I think a lot of things are going to come to the light. And we're going to have a lot of questions answered, I hope. Uh, it just seems that way. I just got that feeling in my heart that that's what we're going to be getting. So without further ado, man, I mean, I got to lay that down on the table and walk away from it. If you haven't seen it, I'll say it one more time. Definitely get that done. I know we got things going on, but at the same time, a lot of us are sitting at the crib. We don't have shit to do. And one of the best things you can do is get your anime on and just watch it. You you'll you'll thank me for it. OK, now. As far as every, what else I've been watching, guys, uh, there's an anime that I'm recently that I'm actually watching right now. Uh, the Future Diary. Now, this is a very intriguing anime. This anime is like, man, uh, it's about a, a kid with a cell phone. I'll give you a quick synopsis. He's got a cell phone and he just, a, you know, he's a he's a bystander. He he he's a quiet kid, not popular. He's just, you know, keeps his head low. Uh, and just observes his everyday life. A lot of people call him stuck up. They, they, a lot of the students think he's, you know, because he doesn't talk much and he's just kind of always on his phone. But that's just what he does. He talks to himself a lot. <laughs> and uh, basically, he all of a sudden gets this power to basically see the future. Shit gets really, really interesting from that point on. Uh, I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to I'm early into it. I think two episodes That's all I've, all I've seen. But they're very interesting, man. There's still some questions I don't know answers to, but check it out. Definitely check it out. It's, 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 you know, on my list. I got so many anime still that I need to watch and cover. I mean, I'm going to at least say a couple dozen that, that are on my Hulu, you know, checklist. I still have some, some Netflix stuff too. So I'll just combing through my Hulu shit. And, um, I wanted to find something else to watch cause I just finished a uh, high score girl season two and I'm going to get to that next, but yeah. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been watching. And uh, I've also watching Baki, uh, the original Baki, not the Netflix Baki, the, the original Baki uh, when it first started. Uh, I think I'm like hmm, maybe a dozen episodes in starts out when he's 13 years old, man. And you go from there. All I will say is his daddy is a fucking dickhead. And uh, it's very good, though. It's it's, it's really good. I, I was Baki was so good on Netflix. I kind of wanted to uh, to check it out a little further and go a little deeper into the series. And, uh, the only place I could find it personally, man, is YouTube. Uh, I've found 48 episodes that are dubbed and that's what I've been watching it on. So if you are looking for, you know, that Baki fix and you want more, definitely check out YouTube. Cause that's where I'm, I found it. I put a couple of friends on there who couldn't find it either. And they found it the exact same one. So yeah, man, uh, it's, it's everywhere. Anime is everywhere out there. Like tower of God is another one that I've been, been looking at and, you know, I don't have Crunchyroll an account and VRV only let you, you know, access certain anime with commercials. Some of them they have behind a paywall and that's one of them. So I go to YouTube to watch it. So that's how I, you know, get that. But the star of the show, the star of the fucking show that I want to talk about before I leave you guys is High Score Girl season two. And I have to say this, I have to say this, man, because this is high score girl has become, I can't believe I'm saying this. One of my favorite anime. Yes, I've said it. And I mean, I'm talking about it's up there with Kamitsu no Yaiba, a AKA Demon Slayer. It's up there with Fire Force, Vinland Saga. You know what I mean? Berserk. I'm putting it up there. You know what I mean? I can't believe I'm saying that. Fate Zero, Fate Stay Night, Unlimited Blade Works. It's up there with those guys, man. You know, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Like, yes, it's up there with those. Um, and it's completely different from those. Uh, most of those anime that I just named, guys, are, are action based for the most part anime, you know, um, high drama, you know, 
intense. You know, the, that's what those are. Uh, Dragon Ball, you know, Naruto. Th- those are the top, the creme de la creme in, in my eyes, you know, uh, some of my all time favorites. And I am putting High Score Girl in that category. And if you have not seen High Score Girl, then you will never understand until you watch it. I don't want to hear anything from anybody until you've seen it. And it is like I told you, I've talked about this anime before. OK, when I saw it, I discovered it in late 2019. It was actually out in 2018. It came out on season one on Netflix. And then uh, ever since I saw it, I was waiting for the day to finally get season two. And it, they just nobody knew anything. They kept pushing it back. Nobody knew when it was coming out. And then I just got uh, email, you know, from Netflix saying, hey, April 9th. And I just. I I just got excited, man. And I, like I said, I watched it and I binge watched it, of course, because <laughs> I couldn't stop. And I just fell in love with it, man, all over again. And what I did was I went back and watched season one. So I watched season one and I waited and waited, waited. When I heard season two was coming out, I went back, watched season one over again and went right into season two. So I binge binge watched season one all the way to season two. And it's one of my favorite anime out, period. It's about a boy for those new listeners, for people who don't know, uh, for for you guys who weren't listening uh, when I talked about it, you know, in the previous episodes. It's basically about a boy named Haru who, you know, loves video games. He hangs out in arcades all the fucking time trying to be the best player he could fucking be. And out of nowhere, you know, and he's good too. let me say that he, he's really good. Nobody can really beat him. He's like the top guy, the top kid in the arcades. Everybody knows about him in Street Fighter. OK, in Street Fighter, too. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this fucking introvert that this 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 girl, this rich kid comes in there. She doesn't talk to anybody, man. And she comes in there and she starts breaking records left and right, beating everybody, beats his ass, mops him up real quick, um, you know, handles him accordingly. And he hates her. He hates her for it. And, you know, she doesn't like him either. And, and but it from it, can, it started as a rivalry, you know, and then it grew into like respect, a respect type of thing. And then it grew into eventually grew into love, you know, but there's so much more to the story. Uh, you know, th- there's a third wheel involved here. And she goes by the name of Hidaka. OK. Um, and Hidaka. I think that's how you pronounce her name. But anyway, she's a blonde haired girl who, you know, didn't necessarily care for Haru or anything like that at first. You know, just thought he was, you know, not that cool of a kid. And but one thing she, she loved about him was that his, his admiration for for games, not not for video games in general, but just his admiration for anything. She saw, you know, she saw how much he cared. She saw how much he, you know, he mowed over, you know, games. He took it, you know. And he put it like at the top and he wouldn't let anybody, no matter what, get in the way of that. And that's what she fell in love with at first. And then she ended up falling for him, you know, as a person. And he didn't know this, you know, boys in these anime. Let's just keep it real, man. One of the things that that is typical in all anime, for the most part, with the boys in anime are they're clueless as far as what's going on around them when it comes to like the, the, the act of love. Like, you know, a girl could be sitting there right in his face going Google Gaga over him. and He doesn't even fucking know. You know what I mean? He doesn't even realize this shit. I mean, Naruto did it, you know, with Hinata, with 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 uh, Hinata and the list goes on and on and on with these characters, you know, for forever. Like the, it's just the way it's, they're written. What I love about this shit is that, you know, there's a lot of different dynamics to this anime. There's a lot of other characters I'm not mentioning now that play key roles in this anime and just make it all ro- all the way around a great, a great show. You know what I mean? If you're into it, it basically this anime is so good. It made me basically realize that I can't I can't continue to just stay in one zone when, when, it, when it comes to anime. Like I have to explore, you know, other other arenas. You know, I can't stay in my comfort zone because I'll be missing out on so much, so much dope anime if I do that. So and I'm, I'm, I'm basically trying to give you guys some advice. If you're watching a certain anime, if you're in a certain lane, because we all know anime, you know, for people who don't know about anime, they just think it's just fucking cartoons or whatever. They're the naive people. But anime is so huge. There's so many different genres you could you could kind of dive into 
There's so many lanes you can take, uh, you know, and that's the beauty of it, too. You know, uh, when I first started watching it, I just assumed that this was anime. This it was all, you know, it's Dragon Ball type shit. And, and no, to be, you know, on the contrary, it's completely the opposite. Uh, it, it's more, you know, those slice of life, those those, those romantic comedy you know, slapstick type of shows. Those are the ones that, that are, you know, that are around more. So, uh, it, it's just that, you know, some of the more popular ones, you know, they get that, they get that recognition because of that. But if you're looking for an anime, that's just good. Like, you know, is it a, is it a fighting anime? Don't ask if it's a fighting anime. Don't ask if it's, you know, lots of, lots of death or, or, or rated M mature or anything like that. Just if you're looking for a good anime, Fuck that. A great anime, an awesome anime. This is one you should definitely, definitely take a look at. Most of us have Netflix. <laughs> so it's there for you. It's there for you. It's there for the taking. Uh, I envy everybody, anybody who has who's never seen this and who has, who has yet to watch this and that who will watch it. But I'm going to watch it again. I mean, I am I'm going to watch it over. This anime is just so good, man. I love it. It is definitely now considered one of my favorite anime all time. I can't believe I'm saying that. I, I still have to step outside of myself and ask me like, really? And every time I do, I look back at myself and say, yeah, really? It's that fucking good, man. And uh, you guys should definitely give it a, give it a go. And all of my listeners should definitely, you want something different and, and you want to get outside of that comfort zone. Take take a leap of faith and go because I'm a dyke dark. I'm sorry, dyke. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm a dark anime kind of guy. OK, I love my berserk. You know, I, I love my, you know, fate zero, my fate stay night, you know, all of those type of anime. My, my Kamitsu no Yaiba, my dark, you know, darker tone type anime. But this here makes me want to explore the other side of that of that coin. I want to know now what else have I been missing? What other anime out there are in that's in that's, you know, I guess in that lane, I kind of want to now I want to know like what else has, is there that I can kind of explore. And I've done did a little bit. There's a little bit of that, you know, with uh, is it wrong to pick, pick up girls and in, in dungeons and, you know, there's sword hero, you know, it's kind of like, it's not all the way there, but you know, they're flirting with that, with that side. But, you know, I mean, Full fledged, you know, high school girl type shit. That's what I'm looking for now. Um, I don't I know there's a certain name for it. I can't I can't uh, can't think of the name, but there's certain names associated with a certain anime. And, uh, you know, I'm very interested, but I will say this. I mean, if you love 90s nostalgia, uh, if you grew up in that era, you know, like I did, I think that's maybe why I love it as, as, as well, because it basically took a lot of the same things that I used to play growing up. Uh, it, it, it includes all those things, you know, the PlayStations, um, the Sega Saturns and, and all the games associated with those, the fighting games, which I love, you know, and that came out in that time, all the arcades that I used to frequent all the time and play. I think that's another part of why I love it so much. And they put it together so, so wonderfully. Like there's just, there's just, I don't know what else to say. Um, it's really, if you have to look at it, it's really, it boils down to a fucking, to a love story in, in essence, if you will. If you take away all of the flash and, and, and all of that and, and peel back all those layers, you're going to get a, you're going to get a innocent love story out of this. And I, and I just, I didn't think I would love, if you told me on paper, like this, what this was about, I would probably, I would probably pass it up. Honestly, I would probably say, nah, I think I'll skip that. But uh, watching it and, and just seeing what I've seen, it changed my mind completely. And those are the type of things. Those are the type of revelations I love. I enjoy the most when it comes to video games and anime. When you stumble upon something you didn't expect to see. That's the beauty. That's the the that's the part that just keeps me coming back every time. Those beautiful surprises, man. And this anime is one of those. I cannot. Stop seeing its praises. It must be seen. It, it will be enjoyed by the masses. And I've posted about it on my Instagram and a lot of people have responded. Uh, and that let me know that there's a lot of people that really fuck with this anime. Um, I was on Facebook and I was somebody posted that uh, High School Girl is now one of their favorite anime. And I my sentiments exactly. And he had literally seen it before me. 
This was right before I started watching season two. And I was like, oh, shit, what did you see? Because season one had me by the fucking balls. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And now season two, I mean, it's just it was perfect, man. And to add even more to this equation, when we're talking about this, this anime here, this beautiful anime, there's actually a manga right now um, in the works where it's actually out. It's not finished, but it's covering one of the characters in the game, one of the characters in the anime, um, Hidaka. And she is, you know, the blonde her girl who basically was in love with Haru as well as Ono, who is, you know, basically the high score girl. And this one takes place years later when she's like damn near 30 years old and she's a school teacher who loves to play video games. And that's pretty much all, all I know about. I found out about this right before this podcast. So I'm definitely going to lean into that and see what that entails, because I don't want to spoil the ending of high school girl. But um, it is definitely I definitely hope that 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 manga answers some questions with with this anime. And I'll leave it at that because I don't want to spoil this, guys. It just came out not too long ago. So you guys definitely, definitely need to check it out. I'll talk more about, you know, the anime um, at a later date when I feel, you know, enough time has passed for for some of you guys to watch it. Because, like I said, I'm basically selling it to you now. So uh, that's going to do it for the show, guys. Uh, I really, really want to thank everybody for listening uh, if you're new to the podcast, like I said before, man, welcome to the show. I hope to see you again. I usually drop these every Monday morning uh, like clockwork. You can also check them out on YouTube, uh, Studio MacGyver TV. If you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely do that. Uh, you can get these podcasts there. You can also get me being a dumbass, playing with friends, you know, playing games online and, uh, you know, just gameplay videos and, and shit like that. Sometimes I'll have discussions on there about set subjects I'm talking about now. Um, you know, all of those type of things, guys. You can definitely get all that at Studio MacGyver TV. So check it out. Subscribe. Also, if you're into merch. You know, if you love hats, your, your, your T-shirts, all your anime and video game inspired things, you probably want to check out Beautiful Nerds. That's www.beautifulnerds.com. Nerds is spelled N-U-R-D-Z. They update every month with new shit. Uh, definitely check them out, guys. They are uh, they are dope. So you look out for that. Now, once again, if you want to get at me on social media, you can easily do that, guys. I'm on Facebook at Studio MacGyver. I'm also on Twitter at Studio MacGyver. And Instagram at Studio MacGyver 79. So if you got any questions, if you want me to talk about something, a certain subject uh, on this show, uh, you can definitely hit me up on those avenues. Also, if you actually want to be a guest, um, I'm always inviting people or uh, trying to, you know, let you guys come to the show. If you have a microphone, if you have a computer, we can make something happen. We can get you uh, hooked up and, and maybe get you on a future show. Uh, no pressure, <laughs> no pressure at all. But if you're passionate about anime, if you're passionate about games, uh, then you definitely, you know, might want to think about that. And uh, man, let's get the get the ball rolling. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I, I want to thank everybody one last time for, for listening to the show and check out. Please check out the finale of uh, <laughs> My Hero Academia. But also, um, last but not least, please, 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 please. If you have Netflix and if you're into anime, you have to check out High Score Girl. I would love to hear what you guys think about it. And uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful show. With that being said, I'm going to get my ass up out of here. I love you guys very much. Stay in the house. Stay safe. Stay playing video games. And God, please watch some anime. This is Studio MacGyver. And you have been listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. See you next time. Thank you.